dear students today we'll see about biotechnology its principles and process and how who has coined the term biotechnology and uh, what is the exact definition of biotechnology and this the term biotechnology was coined by Carl Ericke in 1917 and according to the UN convention on biological diversity article 2 the biotechnology is defined as the use of biological systems living organisms or derivatives thereof to make or modify products or process for specific use we use living organisms using this biotechnology and we will modify the living organism according to our various services and also the efb that is european federation of biotechnology also define biotechnology as the integration of natural sciences and organism cells parts thereof and molecular analogs for products and services they opined that we uh, its biotechnology is a not single branch of science it involves various natural sciences including your zoology chemistry biophysics maths also sometimes and using various natural sciences we use living organisms their cells and their derivatives to produce a new product or a process next so now our the biotechnology is mainly governed by two principles that is genetic engineering and maintenance of sterile ambience now we'll see what is genetic engineering the techniques of the biotechnology which are used to alter the chemistry of dna and rna collectively we'll call it as a genetic material and to introduce these into host organisms and thus change the phenotype of an organism so now we Uh, use the dna of desired genes using various re uh, genetic engineering tools to introduce into an host and to produce the progeny with the de desired characters or desired traits and the next principle is the maintenance of sterile ambience in chemical engineering process to enable growth of the desired microbe or eukaryotic cell in large quantities for the man manufacture of technological products like antibiotics vaccine enzymes etc here in the second principle it states that host it is used as prokaryote or eukaryote is used as a host so we incorporate our desired dna into the host to multiply its copies or else simply we call it as a cloning to enormously multiply the number of Uh, what we say it is recombinant dna then to produce the progeny which which is having a special services or the qualities like antibiotics vaccines enzymes etc next so now we need to choose a plasmid where the plasmid is defined as a extra chromosomal circular dna and uh, it is defined as extra chromosomal circular dna which is present in the prokaryote so we need to select an appropriate plasmid which have which its chromosome is having origin of replication due to the presence of origin of replication it initiates the process of replication so it, this is a mandate to be uh, to be with a dna that a origin of ori region will call it as it is a mandate to have in the plasmid the, the, the actually now then see the construction of the first recombinant dna is emerged from the plasmid of salmonella typhi murium the first plasmid or first constructed r dna is extracted from the plasmid of salmonella typhi murium and now after selecting a proper plasmid with the ori region on the dna now we there is a need to cut the dna at specific locations where our desired genes are located so to cut this desired genes or the fragments of the genes we use molecular scissors which are called as restriction nucleases or restriction enzymes so they recognize the specific nucleotides and each restriction enzymes are species specific so they recognize the dna sequence and slices at the particular 
desired place and the fragments are linked with the plasmid DNA by the use of one other enzyme which is called as DNA ligase. Now we will see how what is this recombinant DNA technology and this recombinant DNA technology is also called as genetic engineering which deals with the production of new combinations of genetic material which is artificially in the laboratory. This recombinant DNA and abbreviated we will call it as RDNA molecules are then introduced into the host cells where they can be propagated and multiplication. This is a collective and various steps which are involved in the recombinant DNA technology. We call it as genetic engineering. And what are those steps which are involved in our DNA technology? These are the three steps which are involved in the preparation of our DNA. Now see identification of DNA with the desired genes. We need to identify an organism and the DNA and which is the, the place or the space where our desired genes are located on the desired organism. And the next introduction of the identified DNA into the host. We need to identify the DNA fragment, we need to splice it or we need to cut it using restriction enzymes and this fragment is introduced into the host organism. And after incorporating into the host organism through plasmid what we call it as a vector, maintenance of introduced DNA in the host and transfer of the DNA to its progeny. And we need to maintain a proper and ambient environment in C2 conservation in the laboratory to the host where it undergoes multiplication and that is introduced in the next progeny. And now what are those various tools? which are involved in the recombinant DNA technology. And first is your enzymes, what we call earlier it as restriction enzymes. These are also called as, as we have discussed that these are also called as molecular scissors. And this restriction enzymes belongs to a largest, larger class of enzymes which are called as nucleases. These nucleases are of two types, exonucleases and endonucleases. Exonucleases cuts the DNA exogeneously or superficially or at the tips or at the ends of the DNA. Whereas our endonuclease recognize the sites, specific sites and it can be cut in between the nucleotides. So now we need much of your endonucleases. One of the example of endonucleases is HIND2 which is known as recognition sequence for HIND2. That is that it splices always with a specific sequence of 6 base pairs. So always this HIND2 splices or it cuts the DNA at specific sequence of 6 base pairs. And this base pair site is called as recognition sequence for HIND2. And, see, and all more, each restriction endonucleus recognizes a specific palindromic nucleotide sequence in the DNA. See, palindromic sequence is that presence of nucleotide, similar nucleotides from third end to fifth end and fifth end to third end. In Telugu, we call it as Vikatakavi, or else in English it is Malayalam. These uh, words Vikatakavi, or else Malayalam, this mom, dad, noon, these are all palindromic we will call it as where if you reverse the letters also it pronounced similar in the same way in the D on the DNA some nucleotides are there which are palindromic. And now separation and isolation of DNA fragment what we call it as DNA of interest. Now we are concerned with the specific space on the DNA where we are concerned with the genes present on some place. So now we need to separate the DNA fragment. Now the cutting of DNA by restriction endonuclease results in the fragments of DNA. So now we are using our particular enzyme that is endo restriction endonucleases from the group of nucleases to cut the desired DNA. These fragments can be separated by a technique called gel electrophoresis. 
using the process called gel electroporosis we separate various fragments according to their size and here in gel electrophoresis we use uh, we use agarose gel agarose gel will use to separate the dna fragments and now one more is that and the dna fragments are separated according to their sizes and a separate dna fragment separate dna fragments are visible by using a staining called staining or stain it is called ethidium bromide and after exposure after adding this bromide we need to export that expose that dna fragments to uv radiation now our dna fragments appear bright orange color now the separated bands are cut from the agarose gel and extracted from the gel pieces now our desired dna fragments are extracted from the agarose gel this extraction of our desired dna pieces which are appearing in dark orange color from the agarose gel it is called as illusion these dna fragments are purified and used in constructing our r dna now what are what are cloning vectors vehicles for cloning what we call it as vehicles why we are calling it as vehicles simply these vectors carry their foreign dna to the org host organism and nothing into it simply they carry and put into the process of multiplication so vector serve as a vehicle to carry a foreign dna sequence into the given host cell now we are concerned with the vector so why we need to call an organism as a vector and what are those qualities an organism should have to be called or to be used as a vector in our dna technology so these are the following structures where if an organism have can be used as a vector in the genetic engineering see it should contain an origin of replication this is mandated that ori region of replication initiation origin of replication so that it is able to multiply within the host cell without this origin of o o r i origin of replication they where there is no initiation of replication occurs in the dna of a plasmid or a vector so next is it should incorporate a selectable marker and also vector should allow an external marker which generally we use as antibiotics as a markers so now our vector has to allow that external re, uh, antibiotics with which we select those host cells that contain the vector from amongst those which do not have which do not have that property of antibiotic resistance we select in another way and the next the vector must also have at least one unique restriction where there we cut the Uh, plasmid dna it should have one restriction unit and the vector should be relatively smaller in size the than the host when we are using a vector as a vehicle for cloning it should be lesser in size than the cell and the most commonly used vectors are plasmids and also bacteriophage plasmids are the extra dna structures seen in prokaryotes and which have the property of a peculiar property of antibiotic resistance <clears throat> and bacteriophages are those virus which affects or which infects virus Next. now we'll see how to identify our recombinants that is the progeny which is having the recombinant dna that is r dna so now the one method is there where insertional inactivation method is there so to identify the recombinants so the most efficient method is that that is insertional inactivation it is based on the principle that the cloned dna fragment disrupts the coding sequence of the gene which is what we call as alien gene which we have incorporated in the plasmid dna that that gene will disrupt disrupt the coding sequence now the powerful method of screening for the presence of recombinant plasmid is referred to as this method of 
insertional inactivation is called as blue white selection where this method is based upon the insertional inactivation of the lac z gene present on the vector in the plasmid where lac z gene is present in the vector this lac gene encodes the enzyme beta galactosidase which can cleave the chromogenic substance into blue colored products if this is if this lac z gene is activated by the insertion of target dna fragments into it the development of the blue green color will be prevented and the color which which is a white color without any blue color are our recombinants where are the offsprings which with the desired dna and the colored are not recombinant or or else we can say that the dna is not incorporated into that progeny next now introduction of the recombinant dna into the host cell now we are introducing our r dna into the host cell there are where are the various steps which are we through which we can introduce our recombinant dna that is we have constructed the dna into the host cells these are the following methods by which we can incorporate our r dna into the host cell the simple simple chemical treatment with divalent calcium ions increases the efficiency of the host cell through the cell wall where the host cell will allow the entering r dna by treatment with the divalent calcium ions increases the what we can say indirectly that it increases the permeability of the cell wall whereby our r dna can be injected or can be inserted or can be introduced into the host cell and r dna can also be transformed by incubating the host cell both on ice and also followed by uh, ice and followed by placing them at 42 degrees centigrade what we call such type of treatment where first we are keeping in the cold condition and and the cold condition and on keeping on the heat that is what we call it as heat shock then then by using this heat shock also we can introduce the r dna into the host cell and also there are two direct methods where micro injection method we call it as where our r dna is directly injected into the nucleus of the host cell and also one more method is the by using gene gun method or ballistic methods where beads or bullets of made up of gold or tungsten are dipped into the r dna and that are bombarded or that are hit in the cell of the host and the last method uses used is disarmed pathogen which is what we, which has extracted from the agrobacterium tumefaciens agrobacterium tumefaciens will have a tumor inducing plasmid where if we disarm that plasmid which causes tumor that can be used as a vector through which we can send our r dna into the host cell and what is our process now the process of recombinant dna technology what are the various process involved in the recombinant dna technology first is isolation of dna the dna is that isolation when first we need to isolate the dna that is what we call it as the desired genes which are present on the dna of an organism we need to isolate that fragment and then fragmentation of dna by restriction endonuclease we need to isolate first dna and in the laboratory we need to cut the dna at the specific sites where our desired genes are present and isolation of desired dna fragments we have cut it and now we need to isolate the dna fragments after isolation we need to ligation of dna fragments into a vector we need to link or we need to stick this fragmented dna into the vector dna by with the help of enzyme dna ligase and after ligasing or uh, transfer the recombinant dna after attaching or after linking or after sticking the desired dna into the plasmid dna now that now it becomes an r dna recombinant dna this r dna need to be transferred into the host now 
culturing the host cells in the medium at large scale and extraction of the desired product. We need to culture that host organism in the laboratory to produce uh, multiple copies of the progeny with the rDNA. Now, the first step in our process is that isolation of DNA. How we need to isolate the DNA from the cells? We can take, as we already discussed, that uh, uh, prokaryotes or eukaryotes can be used as a vector. So, first we need to break the cell wall of that particular living organisms. So, various enzymes are used for breaking of bacterial cell wall will use as lysozyme and for breaking the plant cell we use cellulase enzyme and for breaking the fungal cell wall we use as chitinase. So, these are the various enzymes we use to break or lysize the cell wall of a living organism from where the DNA is isolated and DNA should be removed from and also DNA should not be used with its proteins and other macromolecules. We need to take out first these histones and also the RNA from the desired DNA. So, this can again this RNA can be separated from the DNA by the using the enzyme ribonuclease and also histones by using the proteases. Now, fragmentation of DNA. Now, we have isolated the DNA from a living organism with the desired genes or with the desired characters. Now, we need to lysis or we need to break at the specific sites where our desired genes are present. That is called as fragmentation of DNA. So, uh, as we have discussed that restriction enzyme digestions are performed by incubating purified DNA molecules with the restriction enzymes. Restriction enzymes are the class of enzymes, higher class of enzymes where they identify at specific locations of 6 base pairs and cuts the DNA. And now, after having cut out the source DNA as well as the vector DNA with a specific restriction nucleases, generally we use endo restriction endonucleases which generally senses at the 6 base pairs and also a palindromic sequence it recognizes and cuts at the palindromic sequence and this is mixed and uh, ligase is added to join the pieces of DNA. This results in the preparation of recombinant DNA. Now, we have prepared recombinant DNA in the vector using a plasmid. Plasmid, we have incorporated a foreign DNA with the desired genes into the plasmid. Now, we need to multiply this DNA fragments or we need to multiply this uh, plasmid DNA. This can be used by a process called PCR polymerase chain reaction. In this reaction, <coughs> multiple copies of genes of interest is synthesized in the laboratory and using two sets of primers and the enzyme called DNA polymerase. This process of replication of DNA is repeated several times to get some billion copies of the desired DNA fragments. Here, this can be achieved by using a DNA polymerase that which is thermostable DNA polymerase. It extracted from TAC DNA polymerase which is isolated from a bacterium called thermus aquaticus. This is an enzyme where which is extracted from thermus aquaticus a bacterium. This DNA polymerase which is called as TAC DNA polymerase is extracted from this bacterium. Now, this amplified fragment is desired if desired can now be used to ligate with a vector for further cloning. Next. Now, we will see how this recombinant DNA can be introduced into the host cell or an organism. So, there are several methods of introducing our ligated DNA into the recipient cells. If the recombinant DNA is having the antibiotic resistance towards the ampicillin, then the culture, the cells are transformed into the ampicillin resistant cells. 
So, if we spread the transformed cells on agar plates which is containing the amphicillin, only the transformed cells which are resistant towards amphicillin will live and the untransformed cells which are not resistant towards the amphicillin antibiotic will die. Thus, we can isolate the transformed and untransformed cells which have our DNA. Now, how to obtain our foreign gene product? So, the cells harboring cloned genes of interest may be grown on a small scale in the laboratory and the cultures may be used for extracting the desired proteins and then by purifying it by various separating techniques. Now, we will see what are those separating techniques by which our cultures can be taken out. So, first method is by, pre by using bioreactors. Bioreactors enables this is it is thought as a vessel which have raw material as biologically converted into specific products. These are the reactors, big reactors which are in the form of vessels with the volume of culture with a large volume can be cultured in the bioreactors. A bioreactor provides the optimal conditions to for achieving desired product by providing optimal growth condition which is temperature and substrate, pH, salts, vitamins. So, a bioreactor can be called as a controlled environment in a form of vessel where it provides all the necessary conditions for a cell to be cultured or else the cell which we should be multiplied. And the other method is stirred tank reactor where apart from the bioreactor this is a next step where next method to uh, culture our cells desired cell which is having the DNA or gene. So, it is a usually cylindrical or with a curved base to facilitate the mixing of the reactor contents and this is also is equipped with the stirrer for well mixing. So, alternatively air can be bubbled through the reactor. This stirring method or a stirrer reactor is a well versed version of our bioreactor where some sophisticated methods are there, external air can be pumped and also a stirrer is provided for better mixing of the substrate and it also provides a control system or control environment such as temperature, pH and also the sampling and also the various volumes of the cultures can be withdrawn so by using it will have an outlet from where regularly periodically a small quantity can be withdrawn from the stir tank reactor. And then last is that downstream process. This is defined as a strictly uh, separation and purification method which are collectively referred to as downstream processing. A purification and separation of the cells which is referred as downstreaming. This depends strictly on the control test for testing for each product is also required. So, still dear students today we have seen the biotechnology, its principles and process, how to construct a RDNA using genetic engineering and what are the various tools we use to construct our RDNA. And also we saw that how we have to introduce this our DNA into a new that is host organism and also we have cultured our host organism to multiply it. Mm -hmm.